Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right, today we'll be talking about, hey, something we say a lot. The Lord will, let, will never leave us nor forsake us. And um, you know he is faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, if, if we deny him, he can deny us, you know. So, But he can't deny because he has proven that he's faithful by dying on the cross for us. Hallelujah. Rising again. Hallelujah. On the third day. So all praise is due to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of Israel. Hallelujah. All hell, King Jesus. Hallelujah. And if uh, some people say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to repent. It's just very simple. A lot of times I say just a simple prayer of repentance. You know, and simple as this. Father, Lord Jesus, just forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. I know I've sinned against you and all of heaven, all of your throne, in the midst of all the angels. But I know you're rich in mercy. I'm asking that you come into my heart and to my mind that the Father and you will make your abode with me. Strengthen me. Heal me. Give me a new path, a new life. Make me a new creature in you. Help me understand this word. People are saying this about the Bible, that about the Bible. And I've tried to read it and I don't quite understand it. I'm praying that you open my mind by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm also praying that you give me the Holy Ghost. That I will wait on the Holy Ghost till I receive it with full power, with tongues and signs and wonders and marvelous things. That I would understand the dreams and interpret the ones, the dreams that you're giving me, the ones you give me. And that I would do a good work and produce fruit for your kingdom. Oh Lord, have mercy on my soul. I'm a sinner and I repent. I need you. I can't do it anymore by myself. I need you. I'm lonely. I'm down. I'm depressed. I'm weak. I'm sorrowful. Father, please have mercy and forgive me. Show me how to make it in this life. You know, prayers like that, very sincere when you repent. Okay, let's get it, all right? So we're going again, we're talking about the Lord will never leave us, nor forsake us. And um, hallelujah, all praises to our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to Deuteronomy, King James Version, the 31st chapter of Deuteronomy. And it reads, And Moses went and spake these words unto Israel. All right, and Moses, when you say Hamoshia, Hamashiach, Hamoshia, Moses was a deliverer for Israel, right? Hamoshia means deliverer, Moshia, it's just Hebrew. Moshiach means Messiah, like the anointed one, the, the son of, of God, the Christ. So, you know, and say Yahweh Bahashem, Bahashem means exist, Yahweh Bahashem, God exists, Yahweh Bahashem, Hamoshia, Hamashiach, and Elohim, the son of God, you know, exists through Jesus Christ, he's the son of God. So there's some just Hebrew and Greek mixed together and things like that. So a lot of times you have let's get let's get it let's get it going here. And Moses went and spake unto the, these words unto all Israel, and as we said before, that the Bible states Israel is Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the seed of Christ, only flew and came through that lineage, not through Abraham and Keturah, not through Abraham and Hagar, none of that. The promise came through Abraham and Sarah. Hallelujah. And on down, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob became Israel. That became a nation. And he had 12 sons, which are the 12 sons of Israel, or the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. They became scattered throughout all of the earth, all over, all and all over the earth, through the curses for not following Deuteronomy 28. They was put on slave ships. It's in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 68th verse. And you know, became a, a nation of people, but yet the Messiah said they're the apple of his eye. He would never leave them or forsake them, and he would also put them back into their own land one day after all of these things of us being scattered. Hallelujah. But anyway, I spoke those things on other messages I was just reading out of the Bible. And he said unto them, in Deuteronomy 31, second verse, and he said unto them, I am at 120 years old. This is Moses talking this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over. Uh, this Jordan, which is the river, because uh, Moses did a little thing there where he didn't get to really get over there. The Lord thy God, he will go over, go over before thee, but yet he's still, you know, letting Israel know, so right, you're going to possess the land. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations before thee, and thou shalt possess them. Hallelujah. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. 
and this is the part I like, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of, of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So he's telling them, be strong, be of good courage. It is the Lord that's going. He's giving it. He's letting them know that the Most High, El Elyon, El Hino, Shaddai, Elohim, Hallelujah, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, Moshiach, Amen, Hamashiach, Ben Elohim, Barakata, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, just feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, Barakata, Hallelujah. It's just, it's just blessing the Most High. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We're going to go to Hebrews 13, because he's Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Sikhni, Yahweh Salome, Yahweh Shama, Yahweh Yara, Yahweh Nisi, hallelujah, Yahweh Sikhni. So let's go to Hebrews 13, in the first verse. So we know that this, the things written over him was written in Latin, it was written in Hebrew, it was written in Greek. He is, hallelujah, the king of the Jews. All right, and we discussed who the Jews are in Revelations chapter 2 verse 9 and Revelations chapter 3 verse 9 tells you about the real people of Christ, the lineage. And Revelations 1 verses 13 through 15 tell you what he looks like. And he's a man of color. Apostle Paul was a man of color. Moses was a man of color. Okay, so it's throughout the whole entire Bible. Like we said, Israel. El means God. Like Samuel, Emmanuel, Nathaniel. Daniel, you know, Joel, I mean, all that E-L meant God. Israel, okay, Emmanuel, the Christ God with us. And Isaiah, I-A-H, was really J-A-H, because there was no letter J. But it was, so when they put the J, it really was a Y. So it was Isaiah, you know what I mean? Nehemiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah, that I-A-H at the end was Y-A-H. Okay, that's why you get Messiah, right? The Messiah and Hallelujah. See, that means the highest praise unto the Lord. It shows you because the people named their children after the Lord back then. So Yah means Lord. That's where you get Yahweh, you know, and Yahweh Shai or Yahweh Ishai or Yahweh. Some say Yahweh, Yehoshua, Yahshua, Yehu. Uh, in Asian world, they say. Uh, Yasu, okay. Yasu Christo, okay. Anyway, Hebrews 13. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels, unawares. Mm. We went over that before, but that's powerful. Remember them that are in bonds, so the slaves and stuff, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Hallelujah. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. See, here we are again. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. He is our help in the time of trouble. All right? He's a refuge. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. We're flipping around a little bit. And we're going to go to the 10th chapter of Matthew. All right? Let's go to Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 26th verse. And it reads, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be made known. What I tell you in darkness, this is Christ speaking, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the air, that preach ye, preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's who you fear, because Christ can destroy. So he's saying, don't fear what man can do to the body. You know, I said he, uh, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. They're not able to. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And you want to be free in Christ. Are not two sparrows sold for a far thing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. See, Christ is he's, he's there. See, look, 
but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He knows it all the way down to the follicles. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. See how he's talking now, it started it off, talking about people deny him. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -mm. I am not, I came not to send peace, but a sword. See, you think he's coming for peace. He's coming to send, he's coming to bring, cut Satan out of the game. For I am come, I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be of, be of his, be they of his own household. That's why you see a lot of stuff, a shake up on in a lot of these homes and families and marriages and so on and so forth. Because Yah, the Lord is putting down that sword. He ain't coming to bring peace. He's coming to bring division. To get Satan out. When everybody is not, um, on one, on the same page on one accord, then the house becomes divided. When Satan is operating in somebody in the home, they come Christ. He's coming to separate it. And that's when the variance comes. That's when differences and divisions take place. That's why I said a man's foes, a man's enemies gonna be in his own house. That's why a lot of folks are going through it. All of us. You got you gotta you gotta wrestle and get try to get your house in order and everybody be on the same page, not on all these different doctrines and beliefs and things. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. See the Lord wants all your heart, soul, mind and strength. He that have have he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. See, if you don't pick up the cross and follow you, the most high, you're not worthy of it. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. If you're going to die for this gospel, you're going to find eternal life. But those that's getting scared and going to fall away in the last, as the last day, religions and things take place and become one religion and become one, you know, big crazy thing that might not be following the Bible uh, clearly and correctly and spiritually, but on something else, people fall away. Even the very uh, elect might become deceived, the Bible says. Even those that's like, wow, elected. So this deception is going to be so strong, it's going to cause an apostasy, a great falling away. But people just going to be like, I can't endure sound doctrine no more. It's just too strong. I can't endure your teaching. I can't endure the Bible no more. I just want to be just free. Whatever they bring on, let's just do it. You know? Well, us that's going to hold on to the end, we have to remember that he, the most high Christ, will not leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So that's what Christ said, you receive the most high God when you receive him too. And he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever... Whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So we have to be faithful to the end, fully persuaded, ever abounding in the work of the Lord, unmovable, unmovable despite what's going on, despite the different things. We got to still walk in the spirit and be watching and praying and, and just having hope and, and faith and uh, belief. And Christ, and uh, because He will never leave us nor forsake us, He is a keeper. Hallelujah! And He will keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Him. Hallelujah! All praises to the Most High. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And I just want to say, stay encouraged, stay prayerful, stay in the Word, keep looking to the hills from which cometh your help. Hallelujah! And you know, just to stay encouraged with your gifts. And, um, and, and encourage with uh, your steps. If you if your steps are ordered in the Lord, the Most High will keep you. And hallelujah that he, he gave us that promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us. All right? Love you all. Shalom. Shalom.